see how the wheel moves but the caliper doesn't that is playing the wheel bearing they both move together it means the whole hub is moving and the disc which will pull the caliper with it obviously but if the wheel is moving and the caliper is not moving playing the wheel bearing and obviously sounds terrible as well Well, hopefully you guys don't have the same problem that I'm having. The bolts on my one are just hella tight. That is unfortunate. Got it. Yes. Awesome. Now for the top one. They were just... Oh, man, that was... That was ridiculous.
side of the camera, give this a little tap. Should come out pretty easily. Don't let it go flying. Just put it out that last bit. That car comes off. Now we can take off our axe on it. And this drive shaft looks a bit rusty, so I'm just gonna try and lighten the impact of the impact. Let's get you guys where you can see a bit better. There we go. Pop that to one side. Now let's see if she be moving or not. That's what we want. Cool. Moving freely. Now we just need to disconnect disconnect the rest of the knuckle. Oh dear, this is gonna be fun. Everything's so rusty. <laughs> I mean I'm I'm good. I am good. But even I'm not sure if I'm this good. Give it every advantage. What size even is this anymore? I don't know. I have no idea. 16, 15, 17, 19, I don't know. Does the 16 look promising? Maybe. Give that a little tap. It's definitely. No, it's not. Felt like it just because of all the rust. That's going to be a 15. And you can see how the socket is like slightly on there bent. It's because it's partially rounded the nut. It's not good, but at least we can get this off of here. Might not be able to reuse this nut. The threads on the bottom of the tie rod should be fine. So I might just pop a new nut on it, maybe. We'll see. Sometimes they look really bad, and once you get them off, you think, oh, it's not as bad as I thought. Boom. need to keep wiggling this ABS sensor now. Be very patient with it and just try and tease it out. You don't want to snap it, so it'd be an expensive mistake, that's for sure. This can take a long time, but you could save yourself the price of a sensor if you just persist. And then you just slowly walk it up. There we go. And look at that. One intact ABS sensor that you now do not have to buy. You're welcome. Give that clean as well. Give us a look at all that. Ugh, disgusting. So we have to undo this pinch bolt here next. It's a 16. And then there's obviously a, there's a bolt on the other side you might have to count hold. that's in there and then we should be able to knock the bolt out
not very tight at all. Easy peasy. Go. Hit the anti roll bar. Perfect. Now. Well, this would be the tough part, is just getting this snap ring out of the back. My one is completely seized in there. So, I'm going to have a little bit of fun with this. But we'll get there. We'll get this all apart. And then we'll be able to press the bearing out. So I would be looking to break that snap ring out. And also, you can see I've knocked it around a little bit. It's actually a bit hard to see. But it's better to try and get the snap ring moving first. And then get some screwdrivers in here so you pry that forward slot another screwdriver in that gap and then work your way around and eventually you'll get the whole thing out there we go cool it's always rust. Always rust. Nope, you're not watching the Hydraulic Press channel, unfortunately. Still just me. Step one, complete. Okay, Let's see if we can press this out. Yeah, it's just getting a little bit sketchy on the press. I didn't really have it hooked up very well, so I'm just going to beat it out with a hammer instead. You can't install it with a hammer, but you can get them out just fine like this, without damaging anything. So what you want to do is just cut a slot in it and then you want to get a chisel in there and just give it a good tap and you can see it cracks all the way through. That relieves the tension and it will just allow you to be able to tap this off now with a hammer and a chisel. That's that. You don't really want to try and you want to try not to damage this surface here. There is a nick on here that wasn't from me, so it's obviously had a bearing at some point in the past. Um, but yeah, as you can see, that is how you get that bit there off if it sticks on here, because obviously you have to press that into the new bearing. So now what we want to do is press in our bearing. I want to make sure we keep this oops keep this magnetic side facing towards the back of the bearing towards the back and put it in towards the front we have to buy a new one okay so now that we've got our bearing pressed in here what you'll need 
you don't need a pair of these special pliers these are locking pliers um, you could just use normal pliers and just sort of like pinch them and push it down in there I do believe I've shown that in other videos so what I'm going to try and do is get this snuck down in there there we go did I just cover up that whole thing did I miss the money shot let's try that again now what you want to try and do is make sure that the snap ring is not only fully seated but is free right so what I need to do I need to make sure that there's a little space around here for the um, ABS sensor to come through so what we'll have to do is we'll just have to knock that around a little bit and make sure it gets properly seated into its groove I don't think at the moment it's properly seated so your ABS sensor comes through there so obviously you want to make sure that snap ring goes either side of it and not in the middle otherwise you won't be able to put your ABS sensor in and obviously you have to make sure this ABS ring is facing towards the back of the hub which is where the pickup will be and now we can press our flange into the front now it's time to press 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 Just fitted a new bearing into this hub feels great but before i fitted this for some reason i don't know what came in that what got in my head but i pressed the flange over the bearing which you can't do because then you can't press it into the knuckle so i had to destroy the bearing to get it off because the inner race got stuck on so that wasn't very clever and um anyway it's all fitted now just think the heat gets to you sometimes and you just do stupid things doesn't matter how long you've been doing it you can still make a mistake and I'm sure I'm not the only one I'm sure everybody else has got a story of the time that they did something very stupid <laughs> oh well all is well that ends well thankfully that bearing was only 22 pound so not the most costly mistake that you can make it's just a bit annoying so there's a little little detent ball here just a little uh, divot there on the back of the strut and that is essentially what we need to push our knuckle up onto you can also apply a little bit of pressure with the jack and then use the hammer to try and help it up That's that all the way home. So you just need to pop this bolt in first. Give it a little spray of the old MTCs. Get that in there. And then just tighten up this side here. So this bolt here, 55 newton meters.
try and slip in this ball joint. If it's not quite all the way seated, you can tap it the rest of the way. Just move this little dust boot around the front. Obviously mine has seen better days. But it's still better than having nothing in there. Let's see if this will slip in. Don't want to force it through too much. Might need a little bit of a tap just towards the end, but it should just be a very, very gentle tap is what it needs. If you really happen to smack it, stop. There could be um, a buildup of like rust or something on the relief on the actual ball joint pin. And if you force it through, you can strip the threads off your bolt, so be careful. This bolt down here is 40 newton meters. Okay, this one here, we're not so convinced on. We will just do our best. Sometimes with these, they can be a little bit tricky and you might have to put a jack underneath this to stop the pin from spinning. It's actually the ball joint that spins inside here. See how this bottom part is just spinning? We'll just try and push it up there, see if it will stop spinning. And as you can see it doesn't, so you're going to have to put a jack underneath this to apply some pressure. So there is actually a counter hold on the top of this, which I guess would be like the correct way to do it, technically correct way. But because it's so rusted out, I've got no chance with that. So here we go. So this is 35 newton meters. Just gonna give these brakes a quick clean before we put them back on. side when it's on. all that copper grease on there. Got to give it a good clean. Grease and brakes. Like oil and water. Do not mix. One hundred and five Newton meters. That's one.
what a good that is, isn't it? I know. I know. I was a bit like, oh, right. Let's see if we can get that over there. Nice. So it's a good feeling when you talk something down if it just lines up perfectly. There we go. Sorted. So always worth double checking everything. I forgot to put this on, so I just had to remove that 13 and then drop this little cover on in front of the ABS sensor. So always just double check everything, make sure that you're putting it all back together properly. Now I just need to straighten this wheel uh, and straighten the steering wheel rather and then just put the wheel on this side and we're done. As always, finish off every repair with a uh, with a test drive. Make sure everything is good. Make sure there's no weird noises. Make sure none of the bolts shake loose. Sounds strange. Does happen from time to time. So that's that. So maybe if you give this job a try yourself, uh, let me know how you got on. Hope this helps. <laughs>